Once again, I'm going to apologize. This is some of the lost footage, but I don't think it's I don't think it's something that you really had to see anyway. Blaster cylinders right here and right here. They're all terrible. I've never seen a good one. You can hear this. This is the cast iron liner. This is where the aluminum is poured. Fuel's flowing this way. General rule of thumb, fuel has a hard time flowing over anything more than a seven degree angle. This is 90 degrees from here to here. The fuel chart is going to hit this, spin, it's going to go crazy. Same thing here, they usually have a big, for lack of a better word, I'm going to call it a snot, right in this area. The radius here is terrible. Again, you have cast iron here, you have aluminum here. What you want to be careful of, don't run out. You can hit the cast iron to match it into the aluminum. You don't want to run out too far here to where you hit the end point of this. And the other thing is, you don't want to take a bunch of material out of here. You don't really want to change the, the shape of this. You can go ahead and blend this so this is, this is a nice even surface, but you don't, want to, you don't want to cut into it really deep. I'll try and demonstrate. I'm using my double cut bit on this. This has the two cross hatches in it. Really slow, keep moving. Right here, starting to work really well. Okay, at that point we're done. Much better. Um, I did leave a little bit. I understand this isn't perfectly cleared out, but I'm going to save it because, again, we're going in here with a stone after, so I want to leave myself a little bit of room to get all of this cleaned out. When you start getting into radiuses like this, you can use a bigger bit in here. This one sometimes, when you start getting in here, you're going to need a really small bit. Same thing right here. A uh, very small diameter, I use one eighth diameter, same thing, carbide cutter. Okay, I went ahead and I changed a bit, smaller diameter, and another dual cut, it's probably a little sharper than the last one was. So what this is going to let me do, it's going to allow me to get into some of these corners a little bit more. Um, you don't want to finish it off with this, but it'll start to make it a little bit flatter for you. Again, no pressure, and you can start going this way and start blending a few of these radiuses. See it? Right there. And get rid of that. As you sit here and you watch this, 
I'm sure it's extremely boring, but I think what you should get out of it is the amount of time that we builders put into these things. I will say that the Fordham equipment I used was, was, was a lot faster than this Dremel. But again, for the sake of this, I'm doing it with a Dremel because you're probably going to do it with a Dremel. And just to show you it can be done with a little bit of patience. This area right here, this flat, you can start, you want to work from this port out this way. You can start getting rid of that. And you just want to keep a nice flow angle. Come in and start blending all the radiuses. I changed my bit. This is the 1 8 single cut and I'm going to use this to get into this radius, this radius, work this one a little bit and also you're going to need it on this back one over here but I'll address this when I get into the sides of these transfers. Trying to get all of the junk out of them. 